Hi everyone and this is John here again. Um, this is, and I haven't done a tutorial for a while, um, this is a video, somebody asked me to do a video, now I think I've done similar before, I don't know how the exposure is on that camera, it's very very dark in here, um, and I've got the fish tank only as illumination. So what we're going to do is, basically I'm going to expose for the ambient light, and then I'm going to fill with flash. Now, for anybody who knows how to do that, maybe you don't want to watch this video, but if you're bored and you've got nothing to do for 10 minutes, um, this is what I mean by expose for ambient. I'm not actually going to look at the video camera because I've got the mic on here. So this is what I mean by expose for ambient and fill the flash. I've told the flash not to fire. So one of the first things first is I'm going to take a picture, which you'll see on the PC, for the ambient. Now, that's looking a little bit dark for me. And I'll tell you my camera settings, just hang on. I'm at 15th of a second, ISO 100 F4. So you can see how bad the light is. So what we'll do is, I've gone to a fifth of a second, and now I'm happy with my background. In fact, I won't show you the previous image. I'm now happy with my background, but my subject is in darkness. Now that's what I mean by exposing for ambient. So if you're not right good with flash, I mean I can turn the flash on at the same time because I'm that good now and I know which is which. But what's going to happen here now, because we're at a sixth of a second, as long as we're under the sync speed of a flash, when I turn the flash on in a minute and we get the flash exposure correct, it means I can speed my shutter up and the background will go darker or brighter and the flash exposure won't be won't be adjusted unless you go above the sync speed of your flash but for me I've got high speed sync so even that wouldn't matter but if you was in manual and you didn't have high speed sync you'd have to stay within the sync speed of your flash so now I'm going to enable my flash And you'll see, I'll show you that on the PC, the flash isn't perfect, but you can clearly see when I'm going to the first one and the second one, it's just like the flowers light up in the middle and there's no difference to the back. So now, that's what I mean by exposing for ambient. So I expose for the ambient. This could be the same, I could expose for the fish tank, which I think you can just see in the room. And then I could have something stood in front of it, which would be dark and fill them with flash. Now I am using off camera flash, but you don't have to, it could be on the camera, it doesn't really matter. I am in manual mode, I'll just fire a shot off in ETTL, and let's see what ETTL does for us. And I've got the compensation. Right, so now I'm just going to let the flash go in ETTL, and we'll see what the difference is. I'm going to look the difference. In fact, the ETTL one's probably, it's balanced it more. Um, so there you go, there's ETTL. Um, and now what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave the flash in ETTL. I'm now going to slow my shutter down, a full stop. So now what will happen is, all that will have happened there is, I mean, I'm going to look, but I know what's happened. You'll notice that it's like I've put a flash on the background. Now what's happening when I'm going to before and after, the curtains are getting brighter, the flowers the exact same, um, because the shutter speed doesn't affect the flash, as we know. But if I keep slowing the shutter down so for a, a lot, I mean, if I go like one, two, three, four, five, six, now what you're going to see happen is you'll see that next picture's gone brighter. And I've deliberately done that, so you'll see it on the video. And you'll think, well, hang on, John, you just said shutter speed didn't affect flash. No, it doesn't. But what it is, is I've slowed it down that much now that the picture's got brighter because of the ambience, not because of the flash. Um, you'll see what I mean when I show you on the computer. So we'll now speed the shutter up and we'll go to a 30th of the second. Um, and you'll see on all these shots, the background's really, really dark there. In fact, it's very dramatic. It looks quite cool, actually. 
The background's really dramatically dark, but the flash exposure on the flower has not changed. Um, and that's how you control two exposures. Now, if I go to, let's just go to 250th of a second. And the flower, I'll show you the picture, the flower will still look the same, but the background is real. I can see all the blue in the sky now. Um, and the flower just looks the same. But like, oops, sorry, my things come off. Just a minute, my microphone clips come off. Um, basically, what will happen now is I'm going to go over my sync speed. But what you'll find out is I should better go over. I'll go to a. I'll tell you what. I'll go to two thousand of a second. But it's still only going to affect the ambient light, not the flash. But only because that is a high speed sync flash. If it wasn't an high speed sync, now as soon as you go above your sync speed, your, your flower would go black. Right, but mine's not going to go black. Mine's going to look the self same as the previous image. It's just that when I look at it now, it looks like I've took the shot in the pitch black. And that's it, guys. I mean, it's as easy as that. That's how you expose for ambient. So what you do is come in, either turn your flash off. I'm using it on triggers, but you don't have to. I'll disable the flash. I've no flash now. Take a picture. It's pitch black. That's no good. So we'll... Um, I'll just get rid of that so it's not confusing me on the computer. I'll go down to a 15th. Nah, not bad. I want it a bit more. Okay, I'm happy with my background now. You've set your background. I do know though, as long as I'm under 250th of a second without high speed sync, if I'm at 30th, 60th, if you're at 250th you're on your sync speed, your flash for your ambient reading, that's okay, but when you fill with flash, if you want to darken the background, you can't really speed your shutter up any more than 250th of a second unless you've got high speed sync. So what I would do is, I'd get the ambient reading to be about 60th to 80th to 100th of a second. And then, and whatever your aperture has got to be to get that, and then fill with your flash. Then it means you can adjust your background independently to your flash. I mean, most people have got high speed sync flashes so you can it's that's irrelevant you can i can shoot at eight thousand of a second for the background and then i can slow it down to four thousand or do whatever i like but that's it that's how to expose for ambient and fill the flash i'm gonna do it again now i'm gonna talk you through sorry that the exposure is slightly under but i'm sure you can live with it turn my air back on um Now, I don't know if the camera's seeing that, but I've now, let me have a look. Yeah, I'll darken it up a bit, it's too bright. Is that one, two, three? And you can see now that I've exposed for the fish tank and the light at the back. The, the flower's now dark. So now let's enable the flash. Remember, always get your ambient first. Turn the flash on. It's up to you whether you want to use ETTL or manual. I'll try ETTL. And they, that is beautiful. Look at that. No flash and just a nice little ETTL working as it bloody should. Absolutely stonking. That is a perfect fill flash for the background. Now, I'll speed up the background two stops. So now the flower will stay the same and the fish tank will go dark. And if I look here, the it just looks, when I'm looking at before and after, it looks like somebody's nicked the light from the background. Um, like, like you've took the fill flash away, but the flash is not actually affecting the background. And that's it. That's how to darken your background. We'll go a bit more. We'll go another two stops on the background. And you'll see now that background nearly enough taking the, making the tank look like it's in, day, in, in night time. And that's it. That's how to mix ambient light with flash. It's as easy as that. Do be careful though, I'm just going to give you a little couple of tips before I go, seeing as it's Christmas. If this gets, really you want to have this as close as you can. Because if you end up having it really far back, you might get a bit of spill on the background. But to be fair, the little bit of flash that's sitting in that is not nowhere near as bright as that light. That's why it's nice if you can get it near. 
I mean, even a soft box would even make it better to, to really direct the light. But luckily for me, the, the backgrounds are a lot brighter than the flower. So I, I'm getting away with it. And that, that's how I do it. I mean, if I was to walk in here, it was a wedding. I'd leave my flash off. I would, this is how I work at a wedding. I'd walk in here, it's very dark now, but let's say this was what I had to work in. I'd walk in F4, that's because that's wide open on my 24 to 105. I'd be at 60th of a second, ISO 800. I'd make sure that I was underexposing the ambient a stop or two. And then I'd bounce the flash off one of the walls on the left or the right. And that's it. However hard the flash has got to work, it's got to work. Um, but usually a good rule of thumb is a stop to two stops underneath the ambient. Um, if you do that as well, your flash will freeze the action. So hopefully there's a couple more tips in here for you. If you're, if you're and I'm, I was a bit guilty of this, if you're coming in here and going to ISO 2000 at 30th of a second and you're near enough exposed and you fill with flash, it don't freeze action that well because you're near enough perfectly exposed without the flash. Like now I'm pretty dark. So if I were to fill in my flash, I could probably move a little bit left and right like this and, it, and it'd freeze me. But if I go up to the camera and up the ISO to 4000, so I'm near enough perfectly exposed and then fill with a bit of flash, that won't freeze action. So try get it a, a, so that your subjects are a little bit darker than you want and let the flash bang, bounce off the wall and come in. Try avoid bouncing off the ceiling if you can. Bouncing off the ceiling is very amateurish and I used to do it years ago. But bouncing off the ceiling gives you big shadows underneath the chin because basically you're getting overhead light. You can put an omni bounce on, which works quite well because that'll bounce off the ceiling and off the both walls and off the wall behind you. Um, and that'll give you an okay result as well. I tend not to use them because they're just flat on your battery. Um, but you can use them and they work quite well in a pinch. When you're at a wedding, you haven't got you ain't got time basically to start messing around like I've messed around in this video. If that were a bride there waiting for a couple of nice shots before she got into the limo, she wouldn't want me pissing around with soft boxes, umbrellas, as much as we'd all love to do that. It, it just ain't happening. Not, not for me yet anyway. I wish it would. But anyway, I hope you all have a very, very, very good Christmas. Um, hopefully we'll have a fair few videos coming this year. Um, better audio now i've got myself an external microphone we'll do some on the field again and hopefully instead of me sounding like a piece of crap i should sound nice and clear and we'll get a couple of models and we'll go out and we'll do some good videos don't forget if you want a video or you want me to remake a video because you think it would well i won't say crap but if you didn't like it or it it wasn't um useful enough to you feel free to send me an email and i'll do it if i can help you out i'll do it because that's what i'm there for I don't want to earn any money out like that. I just want to help other people out and let's all share our knowledge. Thanks for watching. Please comment and subscribe.